Hello, Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. For today's video, we will discuss the culture of medieval. The High Middle Ages marked the peak of medieval civilization in Eastern Europe. Agricultural production increased, towns grew, trade prospered, and state began to form. With the growth of towns, there was a revival of interest in learning and the arts. The first universities were organized, and European scholars discovered classical works in philosophy and science. A varied literature and distinctive form of architecture and Gothic developed. Interest in learning revives. Back then, during the early Middle Ages, 500 to 1050, the breakdown of urban life and the general disorder following the Germanic invasions caused a serious decline in level of learning in Europe. Learning continues outside Christian Europe. During the High Middle Ages, trade brought Western Europeans into contact with the civilization of Byzantine Empire and the Muslim world. Scholars in the civilization had continued to value and study ancient Greek works of literature, philosophy, and science. Many of these texts had been translated into Arabic and studied by Muslim scholars. Medieval universities developed. In Europe, the rise of towns and the middle class encouraged the revival of learning. Townspeople had the money to support the cause. Moreover, as a town's population grew, so did the need for the trained bankers, lawyers, doctors, and city officials. Schooling was needed to prepare young people for careers in these professions. University life is demanding. The medieval students' day was long and hard. Students rest before 5 o'clock in the morning, went church until 6, and attended class until 10 o'clock. After a simple midday meal of soap stove, you return to classes until 5 in afternoon. Medieval students have familiar interests and problems. In some ways, medieval students were much like modern ones. Letters to students from the parents still sound familiar. Just like that you do not study in your room or act in the schools as a good student should, but play and wonder about this obedience to your master and indulge in his sport. Religion guides medieval thinking. The best minds of the Middle Ages studied the Bible in the writings of important clergy. When scholars wanted an answer to a question, they turned to the Bible and to church authorities. They saw Christian teaching as a guide to life and as a basis of knowledge. Medieval thinkers held that politics and economic life, law and views of nature, must be based on the Bible. To understand nature and society, they are good one first needed to understand God's intentions for humanity. Religion influenced the medieval view of the universe. The Middle Ages people believed that God had created the world especially for human beings and had placed the earth in the center of the universe. Medieval thinkers were center certain that the moon, sun, and stars were pure and unchanging, superior to anything found on the earth and that they followed different laws of motion from those that applied on the earth. Interest in science grows. Aquinas and many other medieval thinkers, however, developed an interest in studying the natural world. Many ancient scientific works were translated into Latin in the High Middle Ages. They were brought into Western Europe along translations of the work of Muslim scholars. These writings had been unknown in Europe during the early Middle Ages, stimulated a new interest in observing nature. The greatest natural among medieval scholars was Albertus Magnus, or Albert the Great, who was the teacher of Thomas Aquinas at the universities in Paris and Cologne. Albert wrote about geology, chemistry, botany, and so on. Medieval science is limited. Although medieval scholars made important experiments and observations of nature, their investigations frequently were mixed with ideas based on magic, superstition, and folk legends. Medieval scholar Some medieval students had small hand-printed books to use in class while the professor lectured from a large volume.
Curiosity of medieval scholars is indicated by Roger Bacon's diagram of the human eye. New styles develop in medieval art. Medieval art. The medieval period of art history spans from the fall of the Roman Empire in 300 AD to the beginning of the Renaissance in 1400 AD. In the Middle Ages, art evolves as humans continue addressing the traditional and the new, including biblical subjects, Christian dogma, and classical mythology. This article introduced a few concepts of three periods early Christian, Romanesque, and Gothic. That as time goes on, the arts are also gradually changing or evolving and people continue to develop it and enjoy the traditional in the new ones just like biblical subjects, Christian dogma, and classical mythology. So if we notice the designs of those in the picture is an example that the art is now involving. Medieval literature is defined broadly as any work written in Latin or with the vernacular between 476 to 1500 CE, including philosophy, religious, treatises, legal texts, as well as works of the imagination. More narrowly, however, the term applies to literary works of poetry, drama, romance, epic prose, and histories written in the vernacular through some histories were in Latin. So later, in the, con in the continuation of our discussion, we will find out what are the examples of medieval literature. Religious themes are used in medieval drama. Despite the revival of learning, most people in the Middle Ages still could not read or write. Spoken words in hymn songs and dramas was important in bringing church teaching to a wide audience. Religious themes are used in medieval drama based on article written by Heta Elizabeth Hose, the mystery plays and morality plays of the 15th and 16th centuries were very different from modern drama. They were performed in public space by ordinary people and organized and funded by guild of craftsmen and merchants. It says that their teaching is based on presentations to be expressed and this is also their way of teaching the people who watch them. Today is about medieval drama, so presentation and way of presentation we will focus on. Based on my own understanding, it is depends on their time or customs, so some of them are not able to read and write. A later development in, in religious drama was the morality play. Characters representing human virtues and vices such as good deeds or greed acted out the conflicts between good and evil. Often in a comic way, the most famous morality play was Everyman. In this play, the titular character discovers that he is about to die. The most provide God with a book of accounts detailing the good deeds he has done in order to save his soul and gain access to heaven. The play not only teach the audience some complex Christian doctrine, but more importantly, it encourages them to look to their own lives and souls before it's too late. Local language are used in literature. Latin was used during the Roman period, but later it was not used during the Middle Ages. And even in Italy, French, Spanish, Italian, and Romanian, it is no longer to use until the language of the Germanic tribes was developed. It is the vernacular language. The word vernacular originates from the Latin words vernaculus, meaning nature or ind indigenous. The oldest great literary work in vernacular language is Beowulf, based on Danish legend. It was the first written down in the early 8th century in Anglo-Saxon, one of the languages of England. Based on my reading about historical importance of Beowulf, while early year writings in the old English vernacular have survived, including a variety of religious poetry, first lists of rulers and places, legal documents, common sayings and spells, riddle, riddles, love poems, meditations, and brief tales or songs of kings and other legendary heroes, Beowulf is easily the most important literary work in the old English tongue. 
it is accepted as both. The first major poem in European vernacular language, the chief literary monument of the Old English period. The story of the hero Beowulf is talk and killed the monster Grendel before becoming king of his people. Chivalry. What was the mean of chivalry? Chivalry, the knightly class of feudal times, the primary sense of the term in Europe and the Middle Ages, is knights, or fully armed and mountain fighting men. Then the term came to mean the gallantry and honor expected of knights. Later, the word came to be used in its gener general sense of courtesy. Arthur and his knights became symbols of the highest medieval ideals of courage, faith, and chivalry. King Arthur also called Arthur or Arthur Pendergon, legendary British king who appears in a cycle of medieval romance known as the Mother of Britain, as the sovereign of a knightly fellowship of the round table. Court Troubadour Right of Love Vernacular language were also used by medieval poets who wrote short verses and songs on religious themes. Their poems were addressed to noble women, praising their beauty and pledging to them the singer's devotion and loyalty. Unlike minstrels who were professional entertainers, the poet musicians or troubadours were usually nobles. Court Trubadour's Rite of Love, based on my understanding, it is a poem in song so that they can convey to their loved ones how they feel. It is also a way for them to show loyalty to their loved ones. We have a saying that everyone will despise you just to obey. Courtly love set new standards. The poetry of courtly love reflected a changing attitude toward women, at least in the upper classes. Knights were expected to treat women with respect, gentleness, and consideration. The idea of romantic love developed. It was believed that love would improve a man's character and inspire him to noble deeds. To prove worthy of his lady's love, a knight had to demonstrate bravely loyalty and charm. Courtly love sets now standards. It shows how they can respect women to form their love. They also believe that they can change or improve the behavior of men and be an example to everyone so that they can prove their love for women. Rather, it shows what kind of character they want in a woman so they can have an idea of a woman they like. Dante creates a masterpiece in the vernacular. The greatest poet of the Middle Ages was Dante Allegri of Florence, Italy. In the tradition of the Trubaders, Dante wrote love poems to his beloved Beatrice. His masterpiece, however, was the Divine Comedy, a description of the poet's journey through hell, purgatory, and paradise, guided by the Roman poet Virgil within, his, within this framework. Dante gave a vivid description of the people and places of medieval Italy. The poem was written in medieval Italian and helped establish the vernacular as a literary language. One of Dante Allegro's masterpieces that I know is Inferno because when I was in high school, we studied it. So the story is familiar, we, familiar to me regarding the categories that will included or can be the place of someone who has passed away. Dante's Inferno Inferno, the first part of Dante's divine comedy that inspired the latest Don Brown's bestseller of the same title describes the poet's vision of hell. The story begins with the narrator, who is the poet himself, being lost in the dark wood, where he is attacked by three beasts, which he cannot escape. He is rescued by the Roman poet Virgil, who is sent by Beatrice, Dante's ideal woman, to gather the begin the journey into the underworld or the nine circles of hell. Dante's first circle of hell is Lembo. Dante's first circle of hell is resided by virtuous non-Christians and unbaptized pagans who are punished with eternity in an inferior form of heaven. They live in a castle with seven gates which symbolize the seven virtues. 
Her Dante sees many prominent people from classical antiquity, such as Homer, Socrates, Aristotle, and etc. The second circle of hell, Dante and his companion were hell find people who were overcome by lust. They are punished by being blown violently back and forth by strong winds preventing them from finding peace and rest. Strong winds symbolize the restlessness of a person who is led by the desire for fleshly pleasure. Again, Dante sees many notable people from history and mythology including Cleopatra, Tristan, Helen of Straw and others. The third circle of hell, Dante and Virgil find souls of gluttons, or gluttony, who are overlooked by a war monster, Cerberus, sinners, and this circle of hell are punished by being forced to lie in a vile slash that is produced by never-ending icy rain. The vile slash symbolizes personal degradation of one who over indulge in food, drinks, and other worldly pleasure while the inability to see others lying nearby represents the glutton's selflessness and coldness. In the fourth circle of hell, Dante and Virgil see the souls of people who are punished for greed. They are divided into two groups, those who hoard dead positions and those who lavishly spent it justing. The fifth circle of hell is where the run wrathful, the sullen are punished for their sins transported on a boat by the by Plias, Dante, and Virgil see the furious fighting each other in the surface of the river tanks and the sullen girling beneath the surface of the water. The sixth circle of hell, Dante, and Virgil see heretics who are condemned to eternity in flaming tombs. Here, Dante talks with a couple of Florentines, Marinetta. Degli Overti and Cavalcanti de Calvacanti, but he also sees other notable history figures, including the ancient Greek philosopher Epicurus, Holy Roman Imperium, Frederick II, and Pope Anastasius II. The seventh circle of hell is divided into three rings the outer ring houses, murderers, and others who were violent to the other people and property. The eighth circle of hell is resided by the fraudulent Dante and Virgil reach into the back of Gurion, a flying monster with different nature just like the fraudulent. The circle of hell is divided into ten bulgeas or stony ditches with bridges between them. The last ninth circle of hell is divided into four rounds according to the seriousness of the scene. True all residents are frozen in an icy lake. Those who committed more severe sin are deeper within the ice. Each of the four rounds is named after individual who personifies the sin. Chaucer describes medieval society. Late in the 14th century, an English poet Geoffrey Chaucer wrote a long narrative poem called The Canterbury Tales. In this masterpiece of English literature, Chaucer painted a vivid picture of everyday life in medieval England. Chaucer describes medieval society. The Canterbury Tales is the best known of Chaucer's works. Its vivid portrayal of a diverse group of travelers reveals much about the composition and values of society in late medieval England. It shows a shifting dynamics of social power, an economy in flux, and diverse expressions of faith and doubt within late medieval Christianity. Musicians of the Middle Ages Medieval musicians' history The period of the Middle Ages saw a huge growth and the number of medieval musicians 
who were employed both in the great courts of the era and also in towns throughout the lands. The medieval musicians included troubadours, minstrels, troubers, jongliers. Medieval musicians, the troubadours, the medieval musicians called the troubadours, were originally traveling musicians. The early medieval troubadours traveled from the village to the next and many also traveled abroad. The role of the medieval troubadours changed to part of an elite society of royalty and nobles. The themes of the song sung by the medieval troubadours mainly dealt with chivalry and courtly love romantic ballads. Medieval musicians, the trover trovers, the medieval musicians called the trovers, were troubadours of noble birth and perhaps of finer imagination, a school of poets who flourished in northern France and Europe from the 11th to the 14th century. Their numbers included kings and nobles. Medieval musicians, the minstrel, were one of an order of men who earned a living by art of poetry and music and song verses to accompaniment of a harp or other instrument. Minstrels often created their own ballads but they were also famous for mem memorizing long poems based on myth and legends which were called chansons de jest. Medieval musicians the jungliers The medieval musicians called the jungliers were often the assistants of the troubadours or minstrels Minstrels. Jungliers gained a reputation of itinerant entertainers of medieval France and in Norman England, where many were them to be vagabonds and untrustworthy. Their repertoire included various skills in dancing, conjuring, acrobatics, and jungling. Medieval musicians, the Many singers in Germany, the troubadours became many singers of singers of love songs. As early as the middle of the 12th century, the many singers counted among their number many great nobles and kings. German many singers differed from the French troubadours, and they accompanied their songs on the viol instead of employing jongleurs. Medieval musicians, the waits, the medieval musicians called the waits, were originally employed as watchmen who alerted people to danger by playing loud instruments. The role of the witch gradually involved into a group of musicians employed by the towns. The witch therefore became official musicians employed in the large English towns who were equivalent to the town band. The witch were expected to compose and play music for important town and civic ceremonies and occasions. Medieval art and architecture. Medieval artists express religious devotion, like literature, art and architecture reveal much about the outlook of an age. Nearly all the artists of the Middle Ages, painters, sculptors, woodcarvers, architects, created works and tended to show their faith and devotion to the church. To show their faith and devotion to the church, the artists during the Middle Ages, they simply go through their designs by designing painting and wood carving where they express their faith in the church to show the beauty of the church they put decoration inside and out of the church so in that way they show their artistry because of many people do not know how to read their artwork is a way to help most people understand and become familiar with the stories and content of the bible and even what the church teaches they can fully understand and learn Medieval architecture shows Roman influence. Two styles of architecture developed during the Middle Ages. The earlier style, Romanesque, was used most commonly from about the 9th through the 12th centuries. The most typical feature of Romanesque building was rounded arch or several rounded arches forming a vault. This style of building was adopted from Roman architecture. If we notice the example in the picture is an example of the designs then as how it was made based on the shape and durability of a building that if we notice today we have used it or it has become the basis now and how our buildings are made and designs now for example the church big markets and even in our homes we have used it so we can say that we adopt or have a great influence 
of Roman and time. Gothic architecture evolves. The walls of Romanesque building were massive because they had support the weight of the roof. Late in the 12th century, stone mason began to construct buildings that were higher and more grateful. Instead of using rounded arches to support the roofs, they designed pointed arches. Thank you.